one of she. Hi, and welcome to the show. It's a it's a church bus. This is family friendly. Hi again, and welcome to Three Minute John. Here are the news. Attacks on robots. Who's attacking the robots? No, no, it's taxes on robots. Robots and taxes? No, no, it's uh, paying taxes for robots. Oh, then why didn't you say that? For some years now, human workers started to be replaced by robots on a wide range of jobs. From financial analysts to construction workers, taxi drivers, and even priests, AI robots and algorithms are taking over. It is estimated that in 20 years, over 47% of the US jobs will be automated. Oh, sh Frankly, they could use some artificial intelligence in the Oval Office right now. Hell, they could use some basic intelligence. But all they got is an old crazy monkey that throws shit around. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. So in order to make the transition less painful for the human employees as the robots take over, Jane Kim, a San Francisco supervisor, has created a coalition called Jobs for the Future Fund. Jane proposes that employers who replace humans with robots or algorithms should continue to pay payroll taxes in order to fund training, education, and new opportunities for the laid-off humans. I know it's creepy when you think about it, but that's where we're heading, and it's a pretty good idea. If you can't fight them, make them pay. That's a quote right there. But this is being tried only in California right now. California. So if you want a safe and secure future, reach out to the people that make the laws in your country, and maybe for once you'll have a solution before you have a problem. Or make yourself unreplaceable, because the robots are coming. <laughs> Dude, that, that's too close. Go, go back. Okay. Well, no robot can do my job because I'm so... God dang it, this is the third time! Yo, Suzanne! Did you unplug John again? Sorry, yo! God damn. Well, plug him back in! We can't afford a real one! I'm so great! What? It smells like redneck. The Wi-Fi's main security protocol can be hacked. Security researcher Matty Van Hoef publicly disclosed a major vulnerability that can bypass the protocol of password-protected Wi-Fi routers. Which Wi-Fi routers? Well, almost every single one. Now, I don't want you to panic, but... Fuck! Okay, I'm overreacting, but... Fuck! Yes. The WPA2 encryption protocol, which is used by most devices and routers to encrypt Wi-Fi traffic, can be hacked using the crack vulnerability. <laughs> Crack is short for key reinstallation attacks, it allows man-in-the-middle eavesdropping attacks, and opens up Wi-Fi networks to ransomware and other malicious code injections. You see kids? Crack is bad for you. Okay. Android and Linux users can panic a little bit more than the rest, because Crack is highly effective on those OSs. F on the other side, the attacker has to be in range of the Wi-Fi you're using in order to hack you, and using the HTTPS site is still secure. And now, Professor John will tell you how to stay safe. Update your Wi-Fi devices, update the firmware on your routers, or ask your internet service provider, use Ethernet cable and stick it up your <laughs> laptop, use the mobile data on your phone to surf the web, or get a VPN. Or get a tent, go to the woods, and be one with nature. That's fun. That's fun. <laughs> Yo, Suzanne! I think we got hacked! Pull the plug! Pull the... What the hell was that? Huawei Mate 10. Yep, another flagship phone to choose from. The Chinese company Huawei is the world's third biggest smartphone manufacturer and it's growing fast. Just like Mobelli. On Monday, they announced the Mate 10 and the Mate 10 Pro. It's Mate 10 China. <laughs> With a 5.9 and 6 inch OLED display, a new homemade Kirin 970 processor with a neural processing unit for on device machine learning. They come with Android 8.0 and Huawei's MUI 8 interface. The Pro can be used as a PC like the Samsung DeX, and they both have a Leica dual camera system with a 12 megapixel color sensor and another 20 megapixel monochrome sensor, both having an impressive f1.6 aperture, so your duck face selfies will look great in low light and a huge 4000 milliamp battery, just like my Now, the differences between them are... weird. The standard Mate 10 has a micro SD slot and a headphone jack. Yes. 
but the Mate 10 Pro lacks both those features. What? The standard Mate 10 also has a higher resolution than the Mate 10 Pro. Isn't Pro supposed to be better? The Mate 10 Pro has 6 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, and the fingerprint sensor is on the back for a more clean look, but why not take those features and put them in the standard Mate 10 and just make more storage options? And they even made a third version, the Mate 10 Porsche design, that's basically a Pro with a Porsche logo on the front that costs twice as much as the standard Mate 10. What the how <laughs> the phones will go on sale next month but i have mixed feelings about them i mean the pro looks good the standard has a high resolution micro sd card headphone jack but they still haven't convinced me to get a mate 10 over a galaxy note 8 or an lg v30 or an iphone 10 no i i wouldn't get the x and like everybody else this year, they are trying to kill the bezel. And they have failed too. It's not dead. It lost some weight, but it's still there. The bezel will never go away. Yet. Maybe, maybe in a couple of years. Anywho. This was the show. Thanks again very much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment below. I'm John. Until next time, keep it safe and secure. Cheers. God damn robots. I'm sick and tired of fixing them, you know? I just... <sighs> Chuck! The redneck broke. We need the new one. God damn it.